Would you like to learn how to generate real estate leads using Facebook and Instagram? If so, this is the video you're gonna to wanna to watch. I'm going to show you a real estate lead generation tutorial for Facebook and Instagram, where you can be generating leads for as low as just a few dollars a piece. Take a look. Hey everyone, Kevin Small with 2Q Lead Generation Strategies. If you are brand new to our channel, welcome. We're so glad you're here. What we're all about is helping real estate agents just like you generate more leads, set more appointments, close more deals. And so if that is what you're after, this is absolutely the place to be. Please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here as part of our community. Before we get going in today's video for the tutorial, just one quick note and uh, I'll share this. We have on our website this resources section. I'll leave a link down in the description below. But on here, we have free trainings, free resources, 104 video ideas, something that's very popular, um, our master classes. If you want to go check those out, all of those resources are absolutely free and it is time well spent. I highly recommend that. So like I said, you can see the, the link for that down below. Now, the purpose of today's video is showing you a lead generation tutorial, how to set up Facebook ads and Instagram ads for generating real estate leads. Now, um, I normally do these, I don't know, every six months or so. It's probably been closer to eight or nine since I've done the last one. And so I figured it was time and, and just shoot an updated one. So um, with that, the whole purpose of this, like I said, is just showing you how to create uh, generate leads using Facebook. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and go through that. So what you're going to do is when you get to your ads manager, that's the screen that you're looking at here. It's the Facebook ads manager. You're going to click on this green create button. And this is the screen that pops up now. This is a little different than what it used to be. And so leads is the option that you are looking for. And you can see that you can generate leads using instant forms, messenger, uh, setting up uh, your own landing page and using conversions or generating incoming calls. So I'm going to be using instant forms. That's uh, the one that I, I use the most with my clients. And so I wanted to, to kind of showcase that and show you how that works. So um, there's this option of doing a tailored leads campaign. That's a new option. Um, I like picking things that I want. And so I always do manual leads because um, I want to be the one in control, not just offloading it to them and having them making decisions that may or may not be in my best interest. So you can call this whatever you want. Um, if I'm running, I'm going to do an ad as if I was advertising a specific home. So normally what I would do is I would put the MLS number um, and then lead gen, and that tells me pretty much everything I need to know about it. Um, since you're running ads in the real estate category, you do need to select housing for special ad category. If you don't, your ads are going to be rejected. And it is the number one reason why most real estate agents get their ads rejected is because they're not using the housing option. So housing, United States, and all the special ad category means if you're unfamiliar with it, is that there are certain industries that have advertising regulations. You can see the ones that they've got here credit, employment, housing, and social issues and, and elections. So if you're advertising in any of those four categories, you do need to check that it's a special ad category. Otherwise, like I said, Facebook will reject your ad every single time. Um, the, the campaign details, I don't touch. It's set up as an auction, which is what we want. Um, the campaign objective is generating leads, also what we want. And so with all of that being set up, we're just gonna hit the next button to go to the next screen, which is the ad set. So for the conversion, I'm gonna be using instant forms. And what that is, is when people click on the ad, there will be a lead capture form that pops up right inside Facebook, they never leave, where we're capturing name, phone, email. You can capture other data, but that's the primary information I normally collect, name, phone number, and email address. Um, and so that is the option you want. If you're driving people to your own website, then you can um, you know, use this website option to generate leads. If you wanna do it through Messenger, you can do that. So again, I'll leave it up to you. Um, hopefully you see your business page here. If you've run ads before, see how it says you've accepted the lead ad terms for this page. If you haven't, then you just need to click on that button. Um, it'll take you to a confirmation and you just click confirm and that's it. 
So for the performance goals, I want to maximize the number of leads. I don't ever put a number in here for the cost per result. I'm just going to let Facebook manage that on their side. Dynamic creative, I leave that off. Budget and schedule, you can put whatever budget you want here. You can do the budget either on a daily amount or a lifetime amount. So lifetime means you could say, I want to run this ad for two weeks and at a hundred bucks and it would spend a hundred dollars over the two weeks. And then once it hits that amount, it would just automatically shut off. Um, so a lot of my clients do a daily amount, so I'm just going to keep it at that. You can pick your start date. Um, since I'm doing a tutorial, I'm just going to put that in the future for a little bit. Um, end date, I'll normally run an ad like this for about a week and then I'll either extend it if it's doing well or change it out at that point. Um, for the audience, um, what you're going to do is go into locations and you're going to do kind of a geographic search. So let's say I was targeting people. I live in Logan. Um, so let's say I wanted to target people. If I pick a city, it's going to do a 15 mile radius around that point. And then based on that radius, you can see that over here, um, let me, yeah, it's kind of hard to see because my picture's in the way. But anyway, it says there's almost 100,000 people with just within that area. Um, and then if you want to get into detail targeting, you can't change age, you can't change gender. Those are protected statuses because of the special ad category. So if I were doing this and it was a, a an ad to generate interest from potential buyers, Zillow is one I would probably use. Uh, Realtor.com is one I would probably use. Trulia is probably one I would use. But I'm really just thinking about, okay, people that are interested in buying a home, what else are they looking at? And those are some pretty common ones. If you want, once you put a couple of these in, you can click on suggestions and it'll give you ideas of other ones that are similar. And so you can pick, you know, whatever makes the most sense. You know, maybe you want people interested in pre-qualification for a loan, um, whatever you want to do. For placements, this is where you're telling Facebook where you want the ad to show up. Now, it'll always default to advantage placements, and I don't like that option um, simply because I like to pick my own, right? Um, and so I like to pick my own placements. And so if you go here and click on edit, it gives you the option for manual placements. And this is where you can pick. So if you want Instagram, you would make the box, you would check the box, but you do need to have your Instagram account linked to your ad account. Um, if you don't, then you would uncheck it. The audience network, those are third party websites. Um, I don't like I don't like that option just because I don't like not knowing where my ad is going. Um, and then uh, Facebook. So once you do that, um, it will give you the specific areas. So the Facebook feed is the primary area. You want it there. If you're advertising on Instagram, the Instagram feed is the primary area people are looking. So you would want to make sure that was checked. Marketplace, I typically leave checked. Video feeds, if the if the advertising content I'm using is a video, I would leave that checked. If it's not, I would uncheck it. Stories and reels, again, if it's a video, then I would use reels. It needs to be less than 60 seconds. If it's not, then I would uncheck that option. In-stream, I never use in-stream, so I would uncheck that. Search results, I've had decent results. So those are kind of the, the placements that I would use. The reason I don't like using all placements is because some of the placements have historically low visibility rates and low conversion rates. And so by picking the areas that I know are better, I'm going to get better results for the money that I'm spending. Okay. And then the final section is the ad. So you're actually creating the content for the ad. Again, it should default to your Facebook page. Um, so that will show up there. On the previous screen, if you had checked the box for Instagram, right below this, there would be an option to select your Instagram account. If it's not showing up there, that means you haven't connected it to your ads manager and you need to go do that before you get here. That's another video, another topic. Um, but again, if you had that box checked, it would show up here. Now, you're going to create the ad and you can either use a single image or video or a carousel. There's also this option for multi-advertiser ads. So it says enabling this may increase your ads exposure to people in a shopping mindset or allowing this ad to appear alongside ads from multiple businesses. Well, I don't like my ad showing up next to other possible competitors and other things. So I normally just uncheck that. That's a fairly new option. If you watch some of the older tutorials I've done, that's one of the ones that's new. Um, but so for single image or video, it's going to ask you to go ahead and edit the image. You're going to click on add media 
And this is where you would come in and you would add, um, I've already prepared this image, so I'm just going to use it. And I normally will just pick um, an image where I've got one picture of the exterior and then a couple of photos of the interior. It's kind of, it's giving them enough for them to get excited about the home. But um, one of the things I'm kind of dangling in front of people to get them to respond is more photos, more information about the property. Um, so I want to give them the option to optimize anything that they can as far as the image goes. So I'm going to do that. And then now over here in the preview, you can see that picture is showing up. Now down here in the primary text, the primary text is what's gonna show above the image. So my normal format for this is I'll have a headline and then I'll have some basic information about the property. And then the call to action would be click on the button below to see the price, address, and more photos. That would be my call to action. Here, I'm going to put the agent name, the brokerage, and then if I'm borrowing a listing from someone else, meaning it's not that agent's listing, then I'm just going to put a little star with a little note that says listing courtesy of... And then I would put the listing agent name and uh, with, and then their brokerage. So that's really kind of the format that I use for this style of an ad. Um, obviously the headline is going to be different just depending on what the property has to offer. Same about the, you know, I'll put in a few lines about of information about the home. It's a four bed, two bath, uh, you know, newly updated, whatever, right? And then for the headline, the headline is what's going to show right here below the photo. And you are limited on space here, but the one I normally use is click for the price, address, and more photos. So that's my normal call to action. You can see that showing up here. Description, I don't use that. And for the call to action, sign up is a little, I don't know, it's a little stern. It kind of... Uh, makes people <laughs> question, what is it that I'm signing up for? So I normally change it to learn more. Um, it's just a little easier for people to click on it to learn more. And so with that, I've got my ad set up. The only thing that's left is creating the form. So I'm gonna click here on create form. You can go ahead and call the form, whatever you want. So again, I normally just use the same naming convention, the MLS number and something like lead gen so that I know. Um, with the intro, the intro is what you see on this screen. So I always use for the background image, the image from the ad. I always leave that setting. And then for the headline, I'll normally just reiterate the headline that I used before. So click for the price, address, and photos. So that's really the um, carrot that I'm dangling in front of them, so to speak, to get them to respond. Um, it does force you to put something in this box. So I normally will just put some underlines like that. So that over here in the preview, as you're looking, it just puts a nice little line there and it makes things easy. There's really no reason, in my opinion, to put anything else there. Okay, the next section is the questions. So this is the information that we're gathering. And uh, there is um, a field right here where you can put something above the form. And so I normally just put, Fill out the form below to see the home information, right? Because that's really what we're asking them to do. Um, I like to have the first name first. And what's nice about this is it'll automatically pull in this information from their Facebook account. They don't even need to type anything in. Um, and a lot of times, because it's tied to their Facebook account, usually more often than not, that information is correct. Now they can go in and edit it and change it, but most people, just because of how easy it is, they don't. Um, so I want to add one more to collect their phone number. And so the way that you do that is you click on add category, go to contact fields and see this one for phone number. So now that I've put that in, I'm collecting name, email, and phone. That's exactly what I want. The next section down is your privacy policy. So this is where you would put a link um, to your privacy policy on your website. Um, on your website, most websites at the bottom, they have um, 
a privacy policy at the bottom. So if you're not sure, go to the bottom of your website. You'll probably see something like this. You can use the privacy policy of your own personal website. You can use like your brokerage's website if they have one or even the MLS. So this is the uh, local MLS for the area. Um, so I'm just going to go to their um, privacy policy. You can just copy that link. And if I go back to where we were, it asks you for the link to the privacy policy and you just paste that in with the text that says privacy policy. So they can click on that privacy policy. It'll take them to this link and let them know what you're going to do with their information uh, once you've collected it. And then the last one is the message for the leads. So this is basically the confirmation that says, hey, we've received your information. So I normally leave the headline as it is. Thanks, you're all set. And then for the description I put, you can see all the home information by clicking on the blue button below. I will follow up with you shortly to see how I can help with your home search. Okay. So the blue button that I'm referring to is this one right here that says, right now it says view website. We'll change that in a second. So this call to action button is going to take people to a website. That's the option that we want. If you wanted to make it so that they click this button and it generates an incoming call, then you would use this call business option. But for now, that's the option I'm going to use. And for the link, this is where you would put the link to this particular property. Now, I don't have a link to that particular property just for the purposes of this tutorial. So I'm, I'm just going to pull up some house. It's not the one that you see in the photo, but you'll get the idea. So let's say this was the property that I was marketing. I would just simply come up here, grab the URL, copy that. And then here for the link, I would paste that in so that when they click on the button, it's going to take them to this page here that has all the home information that we promised to give them, right? And then what I'm going to do is I want to change that text so that instead of saying view website, it says something that's a little more obvious. So I would put click here to see the home information. And that's what I would put. Then we're just going to create that form. So with that, we've got the ad set up. We've got the targeting. We've got our budget. We've got the dates that we want it to run. And we've got the actual ad content as well as the, um, <laughs> the, uh, the lead capture form. Sorry, that's the word I was looking for. Just brain went blank for a second. So that is how you set up a, a lead generation ad from start to finish. Once you're done, you would click on this publish button. That would submit it to Facebook for, um, for their review. And then once they review it, you'll receive an email notification um, and then the ad goes live and leads start coming in. The one thing you wanna be aware of is once that's done, Facebook doesn't notify you that you have leads coming in. So you either need to integrate it with your own database, your own CRM, or you can even set up, um, use a program like Zapier to set up email notifications or something like that as leads are coming in. Um, but it, they, it's weird, but they don't notify you anytime that brand new leads come in. So you either need to watch it or you need to set up some kind of automation. And uh, since that's gonna be different for all of you, I'm, I'm not gonna include that in this video because that could be a lot of different solutions depending on what you're doing. So. That is how you create a lead generation ad to generate leads. A lot of times when I'm setting up a, a, an ad like this, normally in today's market, so uh, date of recording on this is September 14th, 2023. Um, as of right now, with the market being what it is, most of my clients are getting leads around 3 to $4 a piece. That's pretty, pretty typical in today's market. At the height of the market where things were super hot, interest rates were really low, some of my clients were even getting leads lower than a dollar, but it was pretty typically around a dollar, dollar fifty, something like that. So it kind of just depends on what market conditions are, but you can generate a lot of leads for a very low cost. And it's great because it's just a way to be able to help you scale, grow your business and create some brand new opportunities. So that is how you create a an ad using the Facebook and Instagram ads manager. Um, hopefully that was valuable. If so, take a split second, click that thumbs up button down below. Um, obviously we appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, you know the drill, click the button down below, 
There's also a bell notification. You'll be notified anytime we put out brand new content. And we put out brand new content like this all the time. Uh, also, if you are interested in our services where we do the marketing for you, we do offer that. So make sure you uh, check the link down in the description below and you can find out more information about that. Other than that, that's it. Make it a great week. Keep crushing it in your real estate business. If we can help you crush it, we would love to do that. So uh, make it a great week and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.